Hello, my name is Jason Zhu. I'll be presenting automatically authoring regression tests for machine learning based systems. This is joint work with Tung Long and Atif Memon at Apple. Let's start with an example to illustrate. The speller or spelling correction system is used in many modern search engines. Traditional speller returns a string that corrects the spelling given the query alone whereas context-aware spellers often contain machine learning components to handle additional contexts, such as location, device settings, and user preferences. Here's a synthetic example where input query is car ash. Speller is supposed to return different spell corrections that are ranked according to the location context, because the same query might originate from different locations. Suppose Cardash is a business name in a city where location A resides. We expect it to be ranked first. Whereas location B, outside the city where location A is located, we expect Car Wash, a common category, to be the top suggestion. This complex behavior is driven by a ML ranking system, and such MLs can make software testing tricky. In fact, we identify challenges that are not just specific to Speller. These challenges actually broadly apply to many ML systems. The first challenge is that the input space can be very large and heterogeneous. Here we can think about testing with image data or text data. Take Speller as an example. The input space grows exponentially, even regarding the input string alone. The second challenge is that the expected output is also evolving with the ML model. Let's go back to our example. If a data point is outside the city where business car dash is located, then at this given location, we expect car wash to be the top suggestion. Thus the location specific test passes the assertion code on the right. However, suppose the ML model becomes more complex such that city borders no longer determine whether car dash should be first. In other words, the ML learns that people are willing to travel to the next city to go to business car dash due to its growing popularity. Now a failure will occur because the speller test case is still expecting car wash. This example shows that a hard-coded test case like this cannot handle changes in its expectation, especially when the ML model updates. The next challenge is that ad hoc cases can no longer facilitate model debugging. When we look at the example where car ash test case star failing, this individual failure gives us very limited information about the ML system. In other words, it doesn't tell us how to fix or improve anything. On the other hand, if we know the system failed only when the first letter of any word is misspelled, then we can try to systematically improve the ML. This is because defect classes are more useful than debugging ML or data issues. Finally, the notion of adequacy or coverage is missing for ML testing. Traditional notions of software coverage is shown on the left, where we just need two test cases to cover all branches. However, this is not the case for the neural network on the right. It is a back box which does not have any decomposable logic branches. In fact, if you look inside of the code, you will only find a series of matrix multiplication and functional transformations. So it is very hard to tell how much testing is enough for ML systems. So these are the four main challenges. And next I'll present our proposed paradigm to address each and every one of them. Given that the input space is so large, a small number of test cases definitely cannot cover all the edge cases. We simply have to increase the number of test cases so that we can test our implicit or explicit ML's decision boundaries. Note that currently we see 100 test points, but in reality, it may be necessary to scale up to millions of cases. We also need an oracle to tell if the actual output meets our expectation. Recall that the test cannot depend on hard-coded test outputs. Therefore, we actually define a test oracle that varies with the production data. Here you also want to test the Oracle to automatically derive expectations from production data. Production data alone may not be enough because it could oversample regions which are less interesting for testing. 
We also want to make sure to sample near the ML decision real boundaries so we can see more of such cases. So we propose tweaking the production data in a controlled way. That is through a model-based input curator so that we can achieve the coverage that we want. Now we suppose we have the sufficient coverage, we will obtain potentially millions of test results. That's why it is necessary to have an automatic test triaging system that looks at all the test outcomes and reports defect classes instead of individual test failures. This can be done either through predefined aggregations or automated clustering, which we will describe in depth in our paper. In the paper, we also describe how we achieve each step with Beller testing. Due to the time constraint, I will only highlight a couple of aspects and results. The first highlight is automatic test authoring. The authoring process for Speller is done in two stages. One, error pattern learning, and two, input perturbation. We rely on user interactions to determine what production queries are misspelled and what are expected. That provides us sufficient signals to learn typo patterns via probabilistic models. On the right, I'm showing transition probabilities learned from our substitution model. Actually, it captures keyboard typos very accurately. Next, we use the learn models to generate new input test cases. Here, we automatically pick three words from production data where no spell correction is required. The table on the right allows us to create mutations based on the position and specific substitutions. And here, we have test cases with input misspells and corrected outputs. In our paper, we actually specify the coverage dimensions. On the one hand, we have input string. Among these rows, we consider different token lengths and character lengths. The other dimension is the typo dimension, defined by string edits. The columns span all possible error patterns within edit distance 2, which covers more than 95% of the typos in practice. The second highlight we use is clustering to identify defect classes when we need to triage failures. Details of featureization and the clustering algorithm are described in the paper. Here, I will just illustrate how triaging works conceptually. In this typo space, we represent each point uh, with a test case. They are colored green if it's a pass or red if it's a failure. Two points are close in this typo space if they share similar typo patterns. Here we have three clusters that I handpicked for this illustration. In the top cluster, we have car ash, where W is misspelled as an A. We also have sushi and car wash with uh, similar substitutions. If you noticed, most of the test cases in the top cluster is green, meaning car ash failure may not be a systematic defect. Instead, this second cluster has about 50% failures. Looking closer, we see patterns where a word gets split into two or a space insertion. And this is the third one, which has over 98% failure cases. The typo pattern in this cluster is deletion in one of the double characters. So the bottom two clusters we found are not ad hoc bugs, but defect classes. These finer grain patterns can actually automatically be learned from the data and then prioritized based on percentage of failures. Patterns like this helped our developers improve their software more systematically. Recall that all the test cases were not handcrafted in the first place, and the grouping is also automatic. So in conclusion, we levered the scaled production data to automatically generate new test cases. And we adopted to user interaction data from production to resolve the Oracle problem. This allowed us also to mine the defect classes with unsupervised learning for triaging. In the future, we plan to apply our general approach to other domains that contain machine learning components. Thank you very much for your attention. All right. Uh, hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to Jason. So first of all, uh, thank you, Jason, for the presentation. Uh, Jason is uh, from uh, Apple uh, in uh, San Francisco. 
And uh, while I wait for your questions in the chat area, hopefully this time I will be able to read them. I'm pretty sure that I will. Uh, I can ask uh, some questions to Jason. Uh, the first question that I have to Jason is, uh, how do you define uh, uh, regression tests for machine learning based system? I mean, how do they differ from standard regression tests? Cool. Uh, thanks for the uh, question, Chair. Uh, so to answer that question, uh, just going back to what is traditional regression testing, uh, from a software perspective, regression testing is something was working before, like uh, a particular code branch, uh, particular input was working before. When we mm -hmm. do regression testing, we want to make sure that what was working before continues to work. And if it stops working, that means we need to stop and fix the code until this uh, behavior comes back live. Now, for testing machine learning system, it's tricky because the data and the model is changing. So mm -hmm. if we just look at one single data point, mm -hmm. it used to maybe uh, work well. And because the model updated, this data point start failing. In that case, uh, we cannot really say a regression occurred in the model or the software. In fact, it might just be the software itself that didn't change. The only thing that changed was the parameters in your machine learning uh, model after it was retrained. So in that case, when we say a regression testing for machine learning systems, we actually need to define it in a broader scope in a statistical way, which uh -huh. means if instead of saying one data point failed and there is a regression that has to be fixed, we can say 90% uh, of things that were working before are now at 89%. However, we allow ourselves to uh, handle the uncertainty or the stochasticity or randomness uh, that a machine system inherently has. So uh -huh. we will not block this. But if it drops 50% from 90% uh, of uh, accuracy or uh, re precision or recall, then we have a red flag to say, wait a second, it could be there's something wrong. Maybe you didn't deploy your model correctly. Maybe your uh -huh. database dependency is not working well. So in that case, we call the regression. But uh, the fundamental difference between traditional regression testing and machine learning regression testing is about this idea of how much uncertainty do we allow at the scale of a big number of inputs so that we can make this statistical statement that statistically speaking, nothing significantly regress is regressing. I understand. OK, thank you very much. So I see there are no questions. Otherwise, please write a, 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 a direct message that I can see. So my next question is, uh, um, I can see that uh, your results are related to a single system, which is the speller system. And so my question is, uh, what are somehow the preconditions or the assumptions that are related to the context of your approach? So what do you think your approach, what do you think your approach needs so that uh, uh, it succeed, then uh, in which case uh, it is it will not succeed somehow. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, so as uh, as I discussed earlier, because we're testing a machine learning system, and this is not just specific to Speller, uh, we cannot just rely on uh, one or two lines of assertion code to say uh, is this input equal uh, is this expected output equal the act actual output? If yes, then pass or fail. No, uh, this requires another level of infrastructure that allows us to test tens of thousands of uh, queries or inputs uh -huh. at the same uh, uh -huh. at once. So uh, the way uh, the current industry standard uh, takes care of this for the software services is uh, they are basically. Uh, hosted as software service. So we're sending them requests and getting responses, HTTP. And then based on the uh, pro internet protocol, we, we can process this in batch based uh, if the end, endpoint service has the, uh, the ability to provide the results with good latency and such. So it does require um, a good level of infrastructure that allows mm -hmm. us to uh, query this or test this uh, in a very high throughput fashion. Uh -huh. Now, uh, we, this specific system is uh, Speller. Uh, and what is specific to Speller in this paper is first the metrics or the evaluation uh, metrics, how we measure the ML system. So spelling correction takes something that was uh, uh, potentially has a misspell and gives a ranking 
of several uh, spell corrections. Uh -huh. So here the evaluation metrics is um, where is the correct answer? Is it among the list is at all, or is it among the top of the list? Uh -huh. The machine learning logic comes into the ranking. However, so you can imagine that this could apply to systems where we have ranking systems mm -hmm. that are driven by the machine learning system. For example, uh, when you have um, a query suggestion system where you type uh, some uh, words, uh, for example, in a search bar, you get uh, several suggestions, meaning right, which right. one do you mean? So yeah. this general metric methodology applies to uh, those kind of broader systems. Um, so that's uh, sort of the generalization that we can apply from the spelling correction system, uh -huh. given that we have the number of inputs, given that we have a well-defined notion of uh, what is expected or not. So for functional testing, the additional thing we do is to make sure that we are making the, we're having a reasonable expectation. In other words, if I have a word that is uh, already a word that is a user selected word from the past, and so I know that this misspell should somehow suggest this expected word that a user clicked or selected mm -hmm. in the past, yes. that yeah. helps my evaluation a lot. Uh -huh. uh, in other words, uh, my uh, Oracle uh, problem becomes easier if the user helped me choose what is the expected output instead of me handwriting it or having someone else to label it. So that's the second requirement is there is this notion of uh, being able to derive an Oracle in your any system you're testing. It may be Speller, it might be Query Suggestion System, um, and that has to be able to be derived in an automatic fashion. For example, uh, you, we could use uh, user logs uh, where uh, the relevant information is logged, what user selected, what was the misspelled query in the past. And then we can basically replay those data points and say, if what the user selected in the past is no longer showing up, that's a data point that will contribute to regression. And mm -hmm. otherwise, we're good to go. Okay. Um, so overall, um, yeah. Th th there is a question. There is another question from the audience so that uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I would like yeah. to go. So the question is, uh, given your proposed solution, uh, is it possible, maybe in the long run, to form, to create a traceability to monitor, for instance, how changes in the hardware parameter values in the machine learning model lead to failure of which regression tests? Yes, absolutely. So this can constantly, uh, this basic uh, approach of tracking metrics, because it's kind of a percentage, so we can actually tr track the trend over time. So for example, what percentage of the uh, queries did not return the desired result? And uh, I, over time, you can actually see which are the points in time where a specific training happened that caused several metrics to go up and down. And you can also see the trade-off. For example, when you decide your model decides to do better on one, oftentimes you will do worse on the other. So in our paper, we actually mm -hmm. define the functional coverage space to make sure that we don't just train a model to get overall better in one metric, such as the F1 score. We want to make sure that in every type of inputs and every type of misspell classes, we don't have any regression. So there are several multidimensional coverage metrics we mm -hmm. simultaneously track mm -hmm. to make sure that we are knowing what's happening to the model at every point in time. Nice, nice. Very nice. So there are only 50 seconds remaining. I don't know if you can discuss with a few words uh, what is next. Uh, yeah. Um, so as, as described in the paper, uh, this general methodology could apply to a general ranking system, intelligence system. And that's what we're currently exploring right now in Apple. So uh, definitely keep tuned. And uh, we will have some follow-up uh, works on this methodology applied to others. Um, and uh, again, thank you uh, for uh, attending the, uh, my talk and uh, the questions were great and I had a great time. Thank you, Jason. So thank you, everybody. This, so the session ends. I remind everybody that if you want to talk with Jason more, you can click on the pop-up button that will show up in a few seconds and we can all go to a discussion room to talk with Jason. So thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.